Hello again, everyone, and welcome to this latest edition of Blues Clues here from Gulfstream Park. So happy to uh, welcome Hall of Famer John Velasquez to the broadcast. Thank you, Jason. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's good to have you here, Johnny. Um, winter meets going well for you. I look at your stats, your numbers. 6,027 wins, about 400 million in purse money. You've won every race. You would basically want to win, in many cases, more than once. Off the bat, I want to know what keeps you around and just keeps that fire burning. Obviously, with good horses, the good races, what actually keep the, keep you coming back more. You know, the, what's the business thing uh, coming up and the hunger to to, to the comp the competition and, and and to do well. Though, you know, it's just, that's what brings you back. Mm -hmm. um, we were talking up there. You know, obviously, the pregnancy has been bothering me for a few years now. Quite a few years, I should say. Not having won that one yet, so still battles me. So those things that still bring you back, thinking about maybe one day it'll be my opportunity to win it. So those kind of races are very important that, that you want to look back sometime and, and say, well, you know, I had a great career and I, and I, I accomplished something. Ladies and so. gentlemen, the New York Racing Association salutes one of the all-time greats, John Velasquez, win number 6,000 on Singapore Trail. When you stop and think and hear the number 6,027 and you're in that rarefied 6,000 winning club, what, what comes to mind? Like I said, it's like I don't really follow it until you guys mention it, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it really hits me at the moment when I hear it, uh, but it's, it kind of goes back to the same thing one year to the other one. I kind of concentrate on the things that I need to do and actually what it, it gives me more uh, gratifi uh, gratification, if, if you will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, it's about what I do, what I do in, on the horses, what I do about winning and, and getting the best out of, you know, the opportunities that I've been given. And, and that's why I try to concentrate more than anything else. The numbers that actually after that, you know, is a thing that it, 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 a day when I retire, I would look back and it's like, well, I, I think I accomplished something and hopefully my family are proud of it. Clearly, even though you're very successful, I don't think anybody would blink twice if you didn't give as much as you you do give in your time. And what what makes you give as much as you do? Well, I've been very blessed and very fortunate for uh, everything has that has happened to me in my career. And mm -hmm. since I, from day one when I came here to New York, uh, into New York, then obviously traveling the country here in Florida now. Uh, but it's something that that, that isn't me. It's, it's had to come from you, though, you know. And I think it's very important, you know, that. I have a great career so far for me, my family, everybody else is, is to give back is very important to me um, for all the things we do with this Jackie's Guild and the Pyramid Disabled Riders, obviously very important since we all here, this is a family affair, if you will, that I think is, is a duty of all of us to, uh, you know, to put the effort, the time and the money to those guys and girls who get hurt on the racetrack and, and don't have anything really. I mean, right now we only give thousand dollars a month, you know, to help those guys and girls and with this wheelchair cars. Uh, rent or anything they need, um, and, and it's very little, you know, it's just $12,000 a year, I mean, it's just poverty, yeah, really. Uh, yeah. But anything that we do give, that those guys really appreciate it, you know, the families uh, really appreciate it, so whatever we can do. Has it been tough for you as you've gotten older, your children are growing up? I remember when they were just babies with your wife, Leona, you guys have been together a, quite, a, quite a number of years. What's it like for you juggling being such a high-end uh, champion jockey, but also being clearly a great father and a great husband. You know, I, I'm, I have to put it this like, obviously I have a great wife and understand the business. She grew up in the business, so she understood the, uh, the business much better than I, than I did even when I came in, because I, I, didn't grow, I didn't grow around the racetrack. I didn't have any family. She, on the, on the other hand, grew up in the racetrack, meaning her father uh, rode races, training, and her, her brother as well. Uh, so she understood the business very well and, and everything around, like, you know, the traveling back and forth and everything, she did that when she was young. Um, so she understood that, that uh, her husband and eventually daddy had to, you know, travel everywhere, uh, having a great wife and somebody with the kids and then come back and let her know the kids, you know, daddy had to go, you know, and work somewhere else. And they understood from very, very young that daddy was, you know, working somewhere else. Um, it helps. So when you, go home, you come home, you, you know, the, the kids are waiting for you. Um, they're happy to see you, mm -hmm. and then you, you you really spend the time that, that you have the time of I, I don't I don't I don't have any any hobbies. So the time that I come when I come home, I want to spend it with the with the kids, mm -hmm. whatever that they can. Even if they don't want to do they don't want to do anything, I yeah. just want to be in the house that I'm present to them and whatever they want to do, or go somewhere and, and the days off or whatever they do. So I try to really spend as much time with them that they knew that I was around. 
try to be the best, best father that I can, the best husband that I can, the best son as I can. So, mm -hmm. you know, try to do the best you can. No, and I saw your mom, you and her here just a few days ago at Gulfstream Park, and it was pretty neat. And I know how tight you were with your, your late father. And um, I'm wondering your relationship with Angel Cordero Jr. I mean, a lot has been talked about over the years and written about, and he's been a real uh, guiding light of yours, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. I mean, from day one, I mean, when I came here to New York, I mean, I lived with him. I lived with Angel, his wife, and the kids. I um, mean, it's always been a, a family affair so from day one. I mean, they didn't treat me any different than uh, another family uh, that came to the house. So it's always been like that. And then he went to uh, train horses. Then when, when he finished training horses, uh, he started working for me as an agent. And we, we, we like father and son. It's like everything. Have a relationship with a father and son and, and a business mm -hmm. that is it's an ups and downs, so you have to ride the ups and the downs with, with, with him at the same time. But uh, it's been a great relationship. I mean, we understand one another, and it was still together. I mean, we were all together until we retired Forever. somehow. Forever, yeah. right? And even when I retired, we're still together. It's not where we're going anywhere. So, right. yeah, it's, 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 it's a different relationship than anybody else that had, had in uh, the ratio right before, uh, absolutely. And it seems like there's many parallels that can be made, your relationship, both personal and professional, with Todd Pletcher, who, I mean, you were with Todd from the get-go. I mean, did you know off the bat, could you just tell he was somebody that was just going to go through the stratosphere as far well, as success? I met Todd when he was uh, working for... Uh, Dwayne. Yes, yeah. you know, so I knew that he, that he had the talent and all the stuff. Uh, working with good horses with Wayne Lucas and everything, then he went on his own. Um, so it didn't take him until a couple of years after Todd was, um, was training. Um, and Angel started working for me, actually. And then Angel keeps agging on him. He's like, you're the young champion jockey. I got the young champion, jock uh, young champion uh, trainer. I got the young champion jockey. So you guys should get together. And then that was kind of the build up right there. And as he grew, obviously we grew together and more horses and uh, better horses. And uh, so, so far we're still together. So, you know, we, it's, we have to ride ups and downs like sure. everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously he has uh, different orders all the time, changing things. And we're still, you know, doing all that, you know, and trying to keep everybody happy, which is hard. Uh, but, you know, we're still, we're still doing business together. Is there a favorite horse of yours? You've ridden so many champions. Oh my God. No. I, it's a tough, I figured there would be, there's too many to, yeah, to list. Too many too. It's like one of the, like obviously it was Weiss Dent. You know, horse of the year and one of the horses who won in the grass, won in the dirt, won the poly track. He, he was incredible. So, you know, it's, it's definitely one of the horses that one of my favorites. Um, there's so many out after that. It's just incredible. You know, I've been very blessed to ride that many horses and, and the big races. So. Before I let you go, we got to walk down memory lane, even for a few seconds, talking about Uncle Mo, who was an unbeaten two-year-old champion. You rode him in his debut, the Champagne, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Being a number of years removed from that two-year-old campaign and Uncle Mo on the track in general, what are, what are some of your memories? I mean, it's incredible. I mean, he was one of the horses that from day one, when first rate runs, he was incredible. You know, one of the things that you dream about, getting a horse like that. Um, and just happened to it was a three year old, a three -year -old year, you know, came back, you know, as a three year old, and it was tough, you know. Obviously, he has a lot of issues and got sick and all that stuff. Um, but imagine if he, he was healthy uh, the whole way. I mean, going to the Kentucky Derby thinking, you know, I have the best horse that I've, I've ridden in a long time. Right. Back then, you know, I'm thinking, it's like, going to the Derby, he should be, he should be you know, he should be the winner, obviously. Yeah, and could going, be a triple crown winner, you know, right? You know, he, he was that good. Obviously, with all the issues that he had on the sick, uh, getting sick, so he couldn't perform. Uh, obviously, he was scratching the derby and mm -hmm. then, you know, didn't run uh, for a while after that. But he was incredible as a two-year-old. I mean, he, one of those horses that you dream about, you know, that's like, wow, this is this is it. This is one of those that that I finally got one of those horses that you dream and hopefully you continue uh, for many years. Obviously, we know what happens after. Yeah, no question. Well, I hope you've got another Uncle Mo in the near future, if not right now, Johnny. This was really Thank great. Thank you very much. Eddie. Thanks so much, all right? The great Hall of Fame jockey, John Velasquez, a man who leads by example. This was Jason Blewett on Blues Clues. We'll see you next time here at Gulfstream Park. <laughs>